Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So we are getting very, very close to hitting 100,000 subscribers. Yay! Thank you so much to everyone who's already subscribed. I'm just stoked to have even one subscriber, let alone heading towards the big 100K. So if you are watching my videos and haven't already subscribed, I would really, really love it if you would hit that subscribe button because I would love to hit 100,000 subscribers before June. That would make me super, super happy. Okay, here we go. So I'm guessing pretty much all of you who watch my videos will be familiar with the term SJW. It's a set of initials, it stands for Social Justice Warrior, and despite the positive origins as someone who fights for civil rights, it's now used ironically to describe some of the weirdest, funniest, cringiest people on the planet. <laughs> While today's SJWs consider themselves warriors for good, insist they represent everyone except for a few ignorant bigots and rally under the label progressives or the progressive left, commentators like myself tend to call them the regressive left because a lot of their views are anything but progressive, such as their obsession with dividing people into racial groups and defining them first and foremost by race. I mean, that's pretty regressive. So is monitoring language and behavior around women just in case they are so fragile that they might be made to feel physically unsafe by words or banal gestures. I mean, that would have progressive around 1850. Also regressive is loudly slapping labels on every nuanced member of the gay community as the number one defining factor in their lives, which is the opposite of progressive since being defined by their sexuality is originally what the gay lobby was fighting against. These are examples of three very backwards views held by these people, and yet somehow they are marketed as the way forward to a socialist utopia, and anyone who points out the impracticality and inconsistencies of these views is called an uneducated, unenlightened, insert derogatory term here, who must be ridiculed and silenced at all costs. In other words, despite their insistence that they are tolerant and empathetic, they routinely show a distinct lack of tolerance and lack of empathy to anyone who questions their dogma. And this is because they are so, so sure that they are correct and moral and that their opponents are not only wrong but evil, that they believe their rightness justifies their rudeness. It's the same mentality of toddlers who are told no by their parents. <coughs> Now, even though these social justice warriors make up a small minority of the population, about 8% to be precise, they seem to be everywhere. Now, this is because they are very noisy and populate the majority of the media, Hollywood, universities, social media, and big tech. All the institutes that have for decades driven popular culture and what is considered appropriate or inappropriate public discourse. As such, this makes it very easy to study their habits and understand their views, and thus debate or caricature them in any way you want, which is very handy in my line of work. So for your viewing pleasure, I have compiled a list of the three dominant types of social justice warrior. From the sublime to the ridiculous to the downright bizarre, here you go. This social justice warrior is what you'd call a fourth wave feminist. What this means is that rather than fighting for the vote, equal opportunity, or respectful treatment of women in the workplace and in public life, which were the first, second, and third waves of feminism, fourth wave feminism has culminated in a movement consisting of the dregs of late third wave feminism plus a bunch of disappointed millennials who have either had bad experiences with men or are desperate to fit in on pain of being bullied out of their friendship groups, who have simply run out of things to complain about, so have started making things up. These made up terms include, but are not limited to, manspreading, mansplaining, and toxic masculinity, all of which are indicative of a movement with a militantly anti-male mentality. Contrary to what they assert, they are not fighting for equality, since we already have that in the form of equality of opportunity. They are fighting for revenge for a patriarchal past. 
The most intersectional of them are also obsessed with race and skin colour and spend their days competing for victim points in the Intersectional Oppression Olympics based on how many allegedly oppressed minority groups they belong to. That, along with spending hours on social media tweeting and posting about how much they hate white people, especially white men. Fourth wave feminists spread lies and conspiracy theories constantly, like the gender pay gap, which has been debunked countless times. The wage gap is simply the average earnings of men and women working full time. It does not count for different job positions, hours worked, or different jobs. It has nothing to do with the same job. It has nothing to do with discrimination. Male privilege, sexist microaggressions, and the absolutely whacked theory that middle class, educated women living in a Western capitalist democracy where there are zero laws discriminating against women anywhere are somehow collectively oppressed by men. It's extraordinary how silly they look when you lay out their mantra without all the spin about female empowerment and my body, my choice, etc, etc. Ultimately, they're just a bunch of miserable women who are attracted to fourth wave feminism because they are insecure and lazy. So are happy to found a group of people who assure them that every single problem in their lives is the fault of some man somewhere, thus absolving them of any responsibility for their own issues. How productive. Now, I've often said that climate change is like a magic topic when it comes to the progressive left. And by that I mean that if you put forward even a smidgen of a hint that maybe you're not as wound up in protecting the planet as they are, they will flip out. It is like a red rag to a bull beyond pretty much any other leftist sacred cow. I mean, I made a joke about that silly school strike for climate change the other day on Twitter, and it got such a large reaction from the lefties, both blue ticked and otherwise, that my name ended up trending Australia wide and I was in multiple hit pieces the next day. And look, don't get me wrong, I am always happy to annoy the left so much that I end up trending and in their hysterical hit pieces, but it is really bizarre. They behave like adherence to some sort of weird religion when it comes to climate change, like everyone must worship at the altar of environmental fundamentalism, and any kind of climate apostasy is howled down and hounded out. It is so weird. Climate change alarmists have, for some reason, bound up the issue of reducing greenhouse gases with inherent morality. Therefore, you can't even be a climate centrist without being screamed at, because to them, even being in the center of the issue is a reflection of apparent evil, let alone being a bit skeptical about it. I mean, just look at this for one example. 2017's intense hurricane season has emboldened some climate activists. In a recent piece for The Outline, a writer called Bryant Merchant asserted that, quote, climate change denial should be a crime meaning people who disagree with me should be punished. Meanwhile, in The Nation, a writer called Mark Hertzgard said that what he calls climate denial should be punished as, quote, premeditated murder. Whoa. Now, I think possibly the reason they get this wound up by it is that since these people are generally bad people inside and are thus projecting this militant tolerance and virtue as a sort of Freudian cover-up, this is just a really easy way for them to virtue signal with very little blowback and lots of encouragement. Save the planet, save the environment, and above all else, protect our children's future. Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? Seriously, they're like cartoon characters, only they're real. Have you ever noticed that literally every single Twitter account you come across that has a rainbow flag emoji in the bio is an absolute jerk? Well, that's because they are a member of the LGBT militia, a breed of social justice warrior that, while claiming to stand for LGBT rights, is actually just determined to exact revenge for their own insecurities. They are quite similar to intersectional feminists in this way, and indeed there is a lot of category overlap. This is particularly evident in their advocacy of what is called radical gender theory. That is, the theory that gender is a social construct in no way connected to biology and that there are multiple genders in addition to your standard man and woman. Which is, of course, 
debatable. Anyway, the ultimate goal of radical gender theory is to erase what they like to call traditional gender norms and have everyone live in some sort of gender fluid paradise. Now this is pushed under the guise of gender equality and acceptance of everyone and respect for relationships. So you know you can see the overlap with the intersectional feminist. However, you don't need to erase gender norms in order to achieve gender equality or any kind of equality. That is taken care of through legislation and the law, not some academic theory cooked up in the humanities department of some university somewhere. All in all, the LGBT militia is a byproduct of the great and also very understandable insecurity that many LGBT people feel. However, that doesn't mean they get to be complete tosspots about it. Being part of the LGBT community does not give you a hall pass to be a jerk. Liberals, I hate them so much. Well, there you have it. The three dominant categories of SJW. And if you can think of any more, please do let me know in the comments. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me. Thank you.